Hello, everybody. My name is Luisa Mesa, and I'm studying mechanical engineering in the College of Engineering. And for my senior design project, um, which I am presenting today, I studied the improved design and manufacture of filtering media for improved water systems, water treatment systems. Um, and I first want to acknowledge my team, uh, composed of Vincent Chung, Juliana Hill, and Tyler Smith, as well as my advisors, uh, Professor Gutierrez Wing, Professor Debella, and Dr. Ron Malone, who was our client uh, belonging to Aquaculture Systems Technologies, which will be uh, referred to as AST from now on. So just as some background, um, our client AST produces um, bead filtration systems for aquaculture wastewater treatment. And aquaculture systems are such as fisheries um, and other types of ponds where fish are enclosed in a set of an area of stagnant water. And it's important to have water treatment in these uh, systems to ensure that these fish are in a proper um, environment and have enough uh, quality uh, water to live in. Um, the tank here, as you can see in the image right now, is a representation of how the bead, uh, bead filtration systems work. So the white dots that you see are the beads, and essentially what occurs is that water is um, introduced through the inlet and pushed through these beads, wherein um, physical contaminants are trapped between them, and these beads also have a layer of bacteria which clarifies the water chemically. So essentially as water passes through, physical contaminants and chemical contaminants are removed. Um, there is a process of backwashing these beads to remove these physical contaminants and also excess biofilm, which requires the pushing of air or blowing of air into the system, which jostles the beads around, thus releasing the trapped contaminants and also excess biofilm. However, during this movement, sometimes uh, beads escape along with the sludge, which um, add um, contaminants to the sludge, which have to be further processed, and this incurs an another cost and also possibly introduces microplastics into water. So the design has been um, redesigned in order to improve this and prevent the loss of further beads. So as a, sum a summary of the project requirements, essentially the important um, considerations for the bead designs were the porosity, which is uh, referencing to the amount of space between the beads to allow for the passage of water and also the passage of um, physical contaminants. And we decided that should be minimum of 50%. The density should be also smaller than one gram per milliliter to allow for the flotation of the beads in water. The size should also have um, outer dimensions larger than a quarter inch, which is the size of the outlet mesh so that they do not escape. And we also want features which allow for the growth of the biofilm required for clarification of the water, which are um, based on the specific and protected surface area. The specific surface area is just the total area of the beads um, within an enclosed space. And the protected surface area refers to any surface area that will not come into contact with other beads or other um, contaminants that will cause the loss of uh, biofilm in this specific area. And in addition to that, we also needed to come up with a manufacturing process which was scalable um, to allow for the production of thousands of beads which are required in each of these systems. Um, so to simulate these properties and ensure that our bead designs uh, were feasible and um, fulfilled the requirements prior to production, we simulated it using SOLIDWORKS, a computer-aided design program. Um, and essentially what we did is we modeled one bead, as shown here, and then stacked it upon itself to create an array which was as tightly packed as possible, meaning that it took up the most space it could within an enclosed um, area. And after this, we were able to calculate the porosity by calculating the total volume versus the volume taken up by the beads, um, as well as the density of the individual beads and um, the overall surface area of the, of the beads. After doing this, we came to the decision to have two final bead designs, the first of which is the tooth bead, that you, as you can see here. There are three images here, the base design, which has no biofilm cover, and it's just the base um, model. The total biofilm coverage, which refers to um, the bead when it has a layer of bacteria all around its surfaces. And finally, the protected biofilm cover, which as mentioned before, um, only covers the protected surface areas, which in this case would be the divots where nothing can be really um, hit on it. And as you can see here, the porosity goes above our 50% threshold, meaning there is enough water, uh, enough space for water to go through it, and also for contaminants to be trapped. And our density can be uh, less than one gram per milliliter post backwash, so ensuring that only the protected biofilm cover is left. Our second design was the cog bead, 
which um, similarly you can see the base, the total biofilm cover, and the protected biofilm cover. The porosity in this case was lower than 50%, which means that water would not be as effectively passed through them. But after consideration with our sponsor, he decided that it was still um, feasible and still good for the product, as it has a greater specific surface area, meaning that more bacteria can grow on it, and thus allowing for better clarification of the water as well. And again, the density was um, low enough to float in the water. Once we had our designs uh, selected, we decided to test whether our beads could grow biofilm, as this is one of the essential pur um, purposes of the beads. As you can see here, this is kind of a model that we used um, to simulate the bead uh, filter systems that our, uh, that our sponsor uses. Essentially what happens is that there is an inch of um, beads that we place inside a jar and within a larger container of contaminated water. Um, and basically to simulate the flow of water through the jar and through the container, we inserted a, a tube and just pushed water through. We blew water through it to induce a flow into the container uh, from the jar. And here is our actual setup. The water is murky because we used uh, fertilizer as our contaminant to allow for the biofilm growth. And for this setup, we used 3D printed beads, as you can see on the far left picture. Um, to be able to produce enough of them. Since we needed about an inch or two of these beads, it was our best option to rapid prototype them using three printed materials uh, to ensure that we had the necessary layer to be able to test them. After ensuring that our beads worked, and as you can see, sorry, in the previous picture, there is biofilm growth on them, that kind of murky looking goo on them is the biofilm. So after ensuring that they grew, we decided to move on to the manufacturing setup. So um, our designs were made with the idea of extrusion in mind. So extrusion essentially is just passing a um, piece of plastic or a rod of plastic through a tube, which is a nozzle, um, while being heated to make it more malleable and thus be able to form it into shape. So for the tooth beads, uh, we uh, passed it through this nozzle and warmed it up to make it more malleable and then passed it through the rollers, as you can see in the lower picture, which had the shape of the bead we wanted. So by kind of pressing it between these rollers, we were able to um, add the shape that we wanted. And as you can see here, we ended up with a long kind of strand of beads, which we then had to cut out and post-process. Similarly, for the cog bead, due to its more simple uh, geometry, we were able to just use an extrusion method. Um, which ended, as you can see, at the bottom of the nozzle with a profile of the bead. So as it was heated, it was also shaped into um, the desired geometry. And as you can see here, this created a long rod of beads, uh, which we then just cut into shape. Finally, for our conclusions and, and future developments, although we were able to produce a bead, um, two bead designs, which our client was happy with, we would like to further redesign these to reduce the density even more, uh, maybe adding air pockets or other uh, methods for flotation to in, um, increase the flotation uh, for redundancy, but um, this preventing further loss of beads. And also we want to test the biofilm growth in our actual finally manufactured uh, plastic beads, which we actually are doing right now. And we also would like to automate the manufacturing process because currently the way we are doing it is that we are physically pushing the plastic through the nozzle, which is very counterintuitive. We would want to automate that process to control the flow um, through the nozzle. And also we would want to improve the hot stamping method to reduce post-processing. So maybe making the end sharper so that it can cut um, the things out immediately rather than having us post-process it. Um, thank you, and if you have any questions, please let me know. What kind of design considerations did you think of when you came to reach those final designs? How come you guys settled on those two? So uh, after doing the, model, the models and the simulation, we also like, saw that they were, like, they were viable, and after obviously discussing with our sponsor to see if they would be. Um, but if I go back to them real quick, um, you can see that there are a lot of divots and kind of like increases in surface area that allow for this biofilm growth and for these biofilm to be protected. Similarly here, you can see that there is no way that the two be cog beads would slot into one another. Um, so again, that would protect the biofilm. And we also had the consideration of manufacturability in mind. So we wanted to make uh, geometries which were simple enough that they could be used um, using simple methods such as extrusion. So this one was mainly an extrusion decision just because it could be pushed out in that shape immediately. And really the only post-processing need would be to be cut. So generally it was um, how do we maximize our surface area and also how do we ensure that this could be mass manufactured? Uh, so I'm interested in the manufacturing process. Yeah. Did, 
when you were extruding, especially I think for the cog bead, did you did you have to play around with sort of the the, the pressure or the speed at which you were uh, you were pushing that out uh, to kind of you know achieve a, a better um, finished product? Yeah, so um, especially with the cog bead, what we saw as an issue was that um, it would come out a lot thicker at the, it would expand after exiting the nozzle as it still had heat energy and all these properties. So um, they actually ended up being wider than we expected. We made the uh, nozzle end, the final profile, be the same size as the final product that we desired. But due to this expansion, they ended up being wider. So we tried maybe like adding a weight at the end to pull it to add kind of like another force which would thin it out. Uh, but this ended up giving too thin of a feature. Um, due to the malleability, it just thinned out too much. Um, so for future considerations, we were thinking maybe instead of having the final design be the accurate like dimensions that we would want, we would make them a bit bigger um, or a bit smaller to kind of reach the actual dimension that we would want for the final product. It's just a matter of um, testing like more of like how to actually do the flow. But this would come after the um, like automation of the process so we could actually control the flow as well and do better calculations. Um, so I know there's like research about new anti anti quorum sensing compounds that could stop mm -hmm. biofilm growth. Are there compounds that could like induce growth and like would that be something that you could use to like make choices for the material of the bead? Yeah, so for the material of the beads, one of the considerations that we did have to take is that it has to be food safe. Since this is again being used for fisheries and other things, um, it has to be safe for the animals. And also if we end up do consuming that fish, it has to be safe for us. Um, so we were pretty limited to just FDA type plastics. And we didn't really research on how, uh, which of these plastics would be the best to induce biofilm growth. Um, our actual plastic that we used was low density polyethylene, which is what um, our client already uses. So they had kind of a preference for that, but it definitely would be a good idea to uh, do further research on what uh, induces biofilm growth and also what would induce the bacteria that we want to grow, since not all bacteria really grow as we need it. Thank you very much. Thank you.